Good evening, or should I say good morning. This is the early morning hours of Saturday, uh, February 10th, 2024. And uh, Valentine's Day is right, right upon us, right? And I'm going to do a video on strange SBI games. Now, uh, um, you know, so if you think, this is probably the most normal of the strange SBI games I'm going to be doing. This is a different game. This is a... Um, Normal compared to Demons, that's for sure. Even normal compared to Dallas, the RPG, or whatever. But it's um, it's a well. I've had a couple of days off work, and I've got to do some gaming. That's why I'm up this late. A like gaming night over, and it's uh, I guess around getting around three. A lot of fun though. I've been playing a lot of Med games, right? Uh, Mediterranean, right? So Med War Sicily and. Uh, even some solitaire med game. So, been looking at the, been looking at that. But here we're looking at Space Capsule Number One, a super science fiction mini game from SBI. The creature that ate your boy. What a what a cool game this is. This is just a classic at this point. It's one of the few SBI games that really stand out as a classic game. That I've discussed a lot of times, SPI, um, they were selling history. So their games were more like a game you, you got, you played a few times, and you learned something about it, and then you moved on. Avalon Hill certainly did have the um, advantage in the sense that the games are much more, their games were much more gamey, right? They still stand up today as a game, but SPI was cranking them out and selling history. This is one of the few, though, that, that still that still stack up and still very fun game. And if you play it, you'll have you'll have a good time. I'll, again, another one of the strange games that I like. Look at there, three seventy five. You won't find it for that price anymore. But um, this was done by Greg Kostikian. This was one of his early games at SPI, and uh, of course he go, went on to have a, a long board game career and. Uh, even a video game career, but let's look at it. Space capsule. I, I think it's always weird that it's called that they call them. They call this a space capsule game. When again, the poly bag. Love these poly bags. St after forty years or whatever it is, it's still uh, fifty years. It's still. Uh, it's still. It's still sticky stuff still on there. Let's let's look at the game itself first let's read the blurb from the murky deck depths of lake michigan <laughs> oh boy the creature rose tossing its massive head slowly it dragged its great body from the waters watchful for the, any telltale movement a long route 42 it began its journey down the super highway Finding sustenance in the eighteen-wheeled Goliath on the road of the road that fed its craving for steel and maintained its monstrous strength. Reports of panic, reports of panic among motorists and residents poured into police, army, and air force stations and bases. Reports too, too incredible to be believed. Only when Manitowic is that it? Manitowic, Manitowic. Um, only when Manitowic vanished into its cavernous depths of the creature's insatiable maw, did rumors uh, acquire terrifying substance. The the ravening creature. This is not bad, right? The ravening creature from the depths was headed for Sheboygan, Milwaukee, and Chicago. Lay beyond the creature that ate Sheboygan pits mankind against monster in fast moving action action packed game that can be played on its fate uh, to its faithful fateful conclusion in ninety minutes. Yeah, it can definitely be played ninety minutes. Army, police, firemen. And citizens, and any of any of several available monsters, 
are portrayed by cardboard playing pieces. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Another fun game from the foremost publisher of Simulations, Simulations Publications, Inc. And their address was, uh, yeah, that's right, that was at that building they wanted to, they got that Park Avenue address, that weird building. But where is the, where is the map here? I want to talk about the game. Here we go. And the map. Is this the map? Yeah. That is the map, my friends. There we go. All right. Middle House of the Head out, but here it is. There's the map. I don't know how faithfully this represents Sheboygan, Illinois. Uh, Illinois. It's Sheboygan, Wisconsin. I'll be honest with you. I haven't spent very much time up here in the Midwest at all. Been to Chicago a time or two. Been to Indianapolis a handful of times. Um, Detroit. Been to, been to Michigan, been to Detroit, been to the UP. Um, a lot of family moved up here to Detroit to work in the in the factories, car factories back in the day. So I've been to Detroit a few times. I've been to Michigan itself. Detroit proper, but Michigan itself a few times. I had a cousin. <laughs> I had a cousin who kind of had to grow up. And at one point, they were living in down, down, downtown Detroit because uh, uncle worked in a Chrysler factory though that was evidently in downtown i remember uh, my cousin they my uncle would give him enough to take it to go to school <laughs> it just wasn't a, wasn't the nicest of neighborhoods but um, that's what they had to do to survive you know um, yeah we yeah that's what that's what you do when you're working people right um uh, but so I don't really know how faithful the representation is. I'm gonna to have to get up there one day. It's as far as like gaming and stuff. It's like God's country, right? You got you know a lot of a lot of gaming, a lot of RPGs, a lot of war gaming going on out in the Midwest. But I just hadn't spent much time there. Spent, of course, when I lived so long and spent so much time outside the country, it's hard to see this. You know, the other states here. Yeah, I'm, I know, I know the Southeast real well been all across it and spent time in everywhere in betwinks. So, um, you know, from Washington, D.C. to Key West and back up again, you know, I know that whole area and out to, all the way out to Arkansas, and even Louisiana, I spent a lot of time there. So, love those places. But I, I don't know, so I don't know how to faith representation it is, but I think it's an interesting thing. Uh, it's an interesting map. The map is done with squares instead of um, hexes, which I do. I like for this, as it's a, um, it's a it's a city area, right? It's an area of urban, so it kind of, you know, the, no diagonal movement. So it kind of represents the kind of limited movement in a um, urban area. I don't know if that was what they were going for. What uh, because Sticky was going for it or not, but that's, I always thought that's made, made sense to me. Or he might have just simplified it to, you know, for whatever reason, because it's a, uh... all right, so there's the, uh, the, the, let's look at the counters here real fast. Some of the counters are cool, because you can pick several monsters. And this is, doesn't have solitaire rules, but it's a, uh, it's easy to solitaire, if you forces and your, uh, if you play the forces going against the monster, I did like the. Uh, oh, these give that th those are cool. SP added of the few games, and this is one of them, if I'm not mistaken, where they give you numbers one through six, and you could randomize them and pick instead of rolling a die. That's not a bad idea to do, especially when, you know, people buying games might not. But the guy, but the um, other than that, the counters are more colorful than usual. The the uh, up four and blue four, right? Um, but, um, yeah. You're going to have your helicopters, and like, nobody even punched those. Uh, a lot of those, a lot of those old, uh, I was going to show some of the monsters. A lot of the, oh, yeah, there goes some of them. And, of course, this is Godzilla, right? I mean, that's what it's portraying, of something like Godzilla, uh, like a kaiju, an early kaiju game, right? That's exactly what it is, and I think that is so cool. See, here's one of the monsters. That's a spider. What was the movie? 
I think that might have been set in Wisconsin where the spotters came from outer space. And But, yeah, I, I, yeah, what was that called? Man, I remember watching that on Sunday afternoon on, on a UHF channel <laughs> back in the day. So, um, yeah, so spider web, there's a web slinging thing. Right there's another creature of some sort, a great ape like King Kong. You could have done that. You can, um, we'll look at it. Let me put, I shouldn't have poured these out, but I just wanted to show you the colors. I think they're, they're more colorful than a lot of the games of the time. And they talked about army. It's like National Guard. You have National Guard. You have the, uh, the, um, Civil Air Patrol, you have the police, and you do have the firemen, and I think even an ambulance, right? National Guard artillery. So it's not, you know, so there's a police. So really, it's all the forces, all these forces, National Guard infantry, uh, fire boat. You'll need, you might need to put out fires from time to time, helicopter. The helicopter, is it a news chopper? I can't remember, or is it Civil Air Patrol? It doesn't do much, but... It can help. Yeah, I think it distract the uh, helicopter unit. What is a helicopter? Helicopters do not count towards stacking limits. Okay. All right. Infantry units. Let's see the sweep of play. Monster player turn. Monster movement phase. Again, very easy to take a a six sided uh, a six sided die and say make the randomization what you want, which way he's going to move. And um, north, south, east, or west, and you could just a lumbering giant coming towards you. See here, you got a Godzilla type creature. You got a, a giant robot, right? <laughs> Obviously, what that is. Um, a spider. We'll look at those two. Wing creature, dragon, or something. Uh, but here, here we go. Monster player turn. Monster movement phase. phase. Monster combat phase. The monster's OP, definitely. He can knock down buildings or whatnot and trying to go after units. Just a slow and lumbering monster, though. Then the human player phase. Human movement phase, human combat phase, and the fire phase. Now you're trying to minimize the damage on a town. But it is... Uh, my voice is going out. Like I said, game night. I was <laughs> talking, probably hollering too much, too. <clears throat> So, monster record sheets, okay, general rule, special abilities, here we go. Historical notes, historical in quotes, obviously, but I love that about SPI. I love when they made a game like this and then put historical notes in there. Um, for reference, there are some appropriate statistics for some of the great monsters of film history, of course, Godzilla. King Kong, Mothra. Um, strengths are given in order to of attack strength, de defense strength, destruction strength, movement allowance, followed by special abilities. Tyrannosaurus, yeah, you can play a Tyrannosaurus. Okay, that's more like a Godzilla. It's giving you its um, fire breathing. See, great height. Jumping, lightning throwing, radiation, right? That's giving you the stats and what it can do. Giant caterpillar, web spinning, okay. Giant moth, there we go. Flying, yeah. Mothra always kind of sucked, right? <laughs> Mothra always did kind of suck. It's just that you know, it's flying and making a lot of wind and being controlled. It's just, I don't really like Mothra. Flying turtle, there we go. Bright fire breathing. Oh, you know, <laughs> all these are really just Godzilla creatures. Jet propelled flying reptile. Wow, that's out there. Giant ape and a giant sea creature. So that's all it is. You're going against one huge monster. And the side that's playing the monster really kind of is at a, at a disadvantage because you've got so many units here, other units. Not a ton, but a, a lot more than you would think. But. If he knocks down a building with a unit in there, if he, he can attack a unit, he can take them out pretty easily. If you get close, you'll be in trouble, right? So, 
but it is a good game. It's a fun game. Here's the CRT. Terrain effect, short street, park, low building, yeah. Combat effect on there. Defense times two in a high building. Low building, defense times two, right? River. No combat effect, all right? Building destruction table. There we go. It's kind of a neat chart. CRT. It's a... Um, Where's the CRT? It's just yeah, what you you're just trying to get the you're just you're you're trying to get his uh, strength down, I guess, or life force, whatever you want to call it, whatever it's, uh, and it's going to go down, try to get to zero, then he falls, and you win the game if you're the player, the um, the human player. But yeah, this is the game, and it is a cool game. And I highly recommend, if you've never played The Creature That Ate Sheboygan, I highly recommend it. You should play it. It's just one of those games that I think every war gamer should play at least once in his life, in their life, he or she, excuse me. But there it is, The Creature That Ate Sheboygan. Um, this, is a, this is a fun beer and pretzels game, you know, nothing... Nothing too. I mean, Ninety minutes is, you get through a ninety minutes, no problem. It's just fun back and forth, you know. Um, I had fun with this game a lot, like I had fun with the um, the awful green things from outer space from uh, Steve Jackson games, right? A lot of fun with it. So they put made a box one of these. They boxed it up. It's it's in several ways you can get it. You can buy them online. They they they'll cost you a little, but if you can find it at a good price, it's well worth it. It's a fun little game. So, so I was going to share it with you. Y'all have a great night. I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.